Good evening. This is June 4th, 2021. This is a special meeting of the Cupertino City Council. Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct the roll call? Councilmember Moore? Here. Councilmember Way? Here. Councilmember Willie? Here. Vice Mayor Chow? She's driving, but she is. Uh, here. Okay. Here. And Mayor Paul? And, uh, um, in the office. Excellent. All right, so um, we have a continuation from an item on June 1st. Uh, we are continuing a discussion about community grant funding in addition to a discussion with regard to a line item for the uh, you know, Historical Society. Madam City Manager, would you like to uh, introduce any uh, further commentary before we begin our deliberations on this continued item from June 1st? Um, with, I should say, uh, at the outset of this, uh, the information to the public that on June 1st, we did take in public comment. And when we continued it to the regular meeting, we went ahead and took the rest of the public comment that was um, asking to speak at that time. So the public commentary has been closed off with this item. Uh, Madam City Manager, would you like to uh, make any kind of opening comments prior to uh, our council deliberation, bringing it back to the dais here. I would just ask if council wants a little refresh from uh, the last time we met on this topic as it was continued. So I would just turn it over to Ms. Rochelle Sander, the uh, assistant director for parks and recreation to either do a refresh or answer any of council's questions. At this Excellent, point. thank you, Madam City Manager and Rochelle, welcome. Thank you. Um, just to kind of give you guys the groups that um, were being recommended by Parks and Recreation Commission. <clears throat> Sorry. So just to give you guys this slide so that you, a reminder of who was being recommended for the community funding. And if you guys have any questions, we are here to answer them. And Carol Stanick, the Chair of Parks and Recreation Commission is with us also. That's very excellent. Thank you very much, Rochelle. And uh, Rochelle, do you have another slide handy with regard to the unfunded applicants? Um, yes. there, was, there was one particularly good slide and, and forgive me, um, I don't have access to my normal computer for Zooms. I had to run over to City Hall at the last minute. Uh, so if I'm a little bit slow on the draw, this is my, uh, mid-meeting, uh, after meeting starting notice to the vice mayor that you might have to take over um, if, if for some reason I inadvertently uh, close out my Zoom. Um, but there, there was a slide, there was a page in our packet, uh, and thank you for bringing that up, excellent. Um, there was a page in our packet that had all sorts of information and I was asking, I was hoping to have precisely what you have up here, uh, which looks to me to be a, a full, um, list of all of the applicants along with a total amount of the funding requested. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, excellent. And so my understanding is that, uh, is this in order of the, um, of, of the ratings by the, um, the Cupertino Parks and Recreation Commission? No, this is just a slide of who requested funding. Okay, and so it, this is in no particular order in terms correct. of- the Organizations. Actually, I think that you've got all the funding. This is Carol Stanick. Sorry. I think you've got all the funded ones towards the top. Okay. Thank you, Chair Stanick of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, it, it looked like that to me as, as well. And so, uh, Rochelle, if you could go back to that slide of all the funded organizations, perhaps um, that does reflect it. But let's see. So you've got West Valley at the top and then UFRAT at the bottom. So go back to your full list over there. Okay, well, it's not quite, it's, it's, it's not quite. So uh, this is the full list in any event. Um, and uh, just, to, just to orient everyone, this is uh, the first part of our conversation. And uh, the, the question is, um, do we follow the recommendations of the Parks and Recreation Commission that had a full um, process for evaluating these applications. They had a point system. Everything was added up based upon their um, ranked priorities of all of these applicants. 
so higher, uh, a lower number was better. And so all of those numbers were added up and you ended up having a, an ordered list. And so um, I believe what they ended up doing was taking uh, the first X number of uh, organizations uh, for requests that added up to under $100,000 and um, uh, someone can tell me how many organizations that represented, but you know that number of organizations made it into their recommendations and the rest uh, didn't quite make it in. And so the question that we have as council right now, uh, keeping in mind the recommendations that the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, has provided for us is what do we decide to do uh, with the actual funding of the grants? Do we, do we follow the recommendations uh, set forth by the Parks and Recreation Commission, do we have some adjustments to make? So at this time, uh, since we're bringing it back up to council, I will entertain a motion. And so uh, again, please bear with me as I'm trying to uh, observe a, a new platform. Uh, but if there are any hands raised, I would be happy to uh, call on uh, council member to uh, bring forth a motion. Uh, I don't see hands raised here. Uh, forgive me if you do have your hands raised, uh, but I will go ahead and um, uh, put forward a motion and I'll call on Councilmember Way who has just uh, put up her hand for the second. I will, I will move the staff recommendation, which is to uh, accept the grant funding recommendations of the Parks and Recreation Commission as to uh, the grant funding. Um, and so, uh, Rochelle, if you can bring back that slide so that we um, have a common understanding of what that group is, uh, much appreciated. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, perhaps one slide up. Excellent. So $92,900, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 10 uh, organizations uh, as shown on the screen. Uh, that will be uh, my motion for the purposes of this discussion. Council Member Way, would you like to second that motion? Yes, I'll second it. Okay, excellent. And uh, just to situate everyone, we also have the other part of this discussion, which has to do with the Cupertino Historical Society um, line item on the on the budget, uh, which we will get to after this discussion is um, is disposed of. All right, I see Council Member Moore with her hand raised. Uh, Council Member Moore. Uh Thank you, Mayor Paul. I'm, I'm just curious about the Euphrat Museum of Art, uh, which is at Danza College, I believe. And I'm, I'm just wondering, we had a very large uh, bond measure passed uh, fairly recently. I'm wondering uh, why we would be needing to donate this money, um, if maybe staff has a, some information about that. I I know what they put in their application, so they're looking for it for their exhibits. Um, I do not, we didn't necessarily ask them about money they had received from other places. Their application does ask that question. However, I don't believe they specified the bond measure and what money would be used toward the same instances. Okay, uh, Council Member Moore, you'll need to unmute yourself if you're continuing to. Uh, uh, I, I don't know quite what to say about that um, because the, the, the bond measure was $890 million. Um, so I'm wondering why the Museum of Art wouldn't have um, some funding from the college. Uh, would you have any suggestions ab about that? And I'm asking you, Mayor Paul. Do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, my, my knee jerk uh, reaction mentally is, well, don't forget about the interest. Um, but um, I, I would say um, not to be um, kind of looking at it uh, too much from a, a granular level, um, but they did make an application for a specific uh, purpose and um, the evaluation I think was um, was a legitimate one. They might not be able to draw upon uh, the funding that was um, provided in that bond measure um, on you know this kind of basis. Uh, and, but without knowing further information with regard to how their funding flow goes and their availability, um, I, I wouldn't really be able to speak as to whether this particular fifteen thousand uh, dollar request for a, a grant could be uh, could be addressed by that measure. 
So um, I, I do see um, Council Member uh, Moore, Vice Mayor Chow has her hand raised. Would you like us to go on um, and perhaps the other council members have some input on, on the item that you're raising here? Okay, so head nod, uh, Vice Mayor Chow. Hi. So I've been wondering what exactly, uh, so for the those ones that we have um, awarded grants for last year, fiscal year 2021, due to pandemic, I think the intent of the grant was for one-time events that many that Cupertino residents can attend for free. But because of the pandemic, how many of them actually carried out an event? So did we get any refund from any of their organizations who own spent funds? So there was an email sent out to all the organizations that received funding. And 10 of those organizations, I'm sorry, 11 of those organizations um, did use their funding. One opted for an extension on their funding. They did have to use that funding extension for the same thing that they applied for. And one did refund their funding, anything that wasn't used toward the event that was supposed to happen. This information is not included in the agenda, right? So no. they have used their funding. So did they, um, did all the events get organized as expected or they, they, they just use it up for other purposes? I did personally- they up for the intended purpose? So at this time, I don't have that information. Person Recreation wasn't overseeing this item at that time. So I would have to defer to um, admin services if they know the answer to that question. Okay. So this is something I think the council maybe should talk about for the next or even this cycle on um, for I think Saratoga their grant is not a gift their grant is based on receipt so they only get refund when they have receipts proving that the the money is used for the intended purpose maybe we should revisit that and another question is I cannot help but notice that out of this 10 recommendation seven are well-established uh, organizations. Um, I think it's, but then some of them are new programs, but some are repeating programs. So I'm just wondering, I thought the, maybe it's not clear. I thought the guideline says we are funding one-time event. Um, so my understanding had been that, okay, this would be an initial funding to get a new event started. And maybe they will find um, other funding sources to become sustainable, maybe after one or two years of city funding, rather than relying on the city for continuous funding, because there are hundreds of um, nonprofits that would could come to city for funding, right? But then the, the intent should be, we hope you get started and that we hope that you use this to establish your outreach and then become self-funded in the future. So is that in, in our guideline or maybe if it's not, maybe the council should talk about, we should clarify the intent of this, our grant. So I would actually like to refer to uh, Chair Stanick on this because the Recreation, Parks and Recreation Commission actually has um, some good thoughts on what they felt that that um, guideline in the policy meant. Great, thank you, Rochelle. Uh, Chair Stanick, and, and it actually mirrors my thought on it as well, um, because they did put a lot of time into considering these evaluations. So Chair Stanick, uh, welcome back. Uh, thoughts on this question with regard to the scope um, of these uh, allocations and the, and the topic of uh, the purview for which they uh, cover activities. Sure, thank you, Mayor Paul. Uh, we did have a very specific discussion about that. And as we looked at the evaluation criteria, they, um, they refer to a, a project and the, the interpretation of that was an event in a particular year. And part of how we looked at that was the historical way that these groups have been funded for some of them, the exact same event year after year after year. And that was done long before the Parks and Rec Commission 
started to do this evaluation, took it over from council. So um, there is uh, one item in the uh, in the ranking for how have they, if they received funding in the past, have they been um, responsible with that? And then if they are new, are they being creative? So, in fact, one of our commissioners said a very similar thing to Vice Mayor, said, I believe this should be for startup funds. And as we looked at the historical way that it has been used, we saw that it really hasn't been historical funds. Many of these organizations basically have been in a partnership with the city to provide some of the events that have happened. And so we saw that some of them have had this partnership. And if we want to change the program, that is you know, certainly up to the council. But um, we were trying to do a balance between ensuring that new organizations could have an opportunity and um, seeing those that the city has had an ongoing relationship in, in terms of some sort of partnership in the past. Mayor Paul, I think you're muted. I am muted. I'm trying to figure yes. out the technology as well on this. Uh, so thank you, Chair Stanek. I uh, really appreciate your uh, insights into that. And I think it also um, speaks to our ability to uh, adjust the process. Uh, so far, I think uh, this year, as with a lot of things, has been an excellent example of uh, progression and improvement uh, iteratively on a lot of our processes. Um, the work plan is, is, of course, the biggest one. But for, for this, I would say that the grant funding um, apparatus, if you will, was actually quite... Uh, ad hoc uh, for a number of years, as long as I was familiar with it, uh, which goes back about 13 years, uh, 14 now. Um, but then in the last couple of years, we did uh, get a, a lot of good work from the Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, a, you know, a couple of years ago, a little bit of uh, questioning as to, well, we put a lot of work into the, the evaluation. Um, how is it kind of changing into council? What's the process? Um, but right now, I think we're in a really good spot in terms of being able to have these rankings. I think Vice Mayor Chow brings up an excellent point with respect to what the purpose of these grants are. Can we think about this along the way? And in, in the aftermath of her comment, I think it made a lot of sense as well to think about it process-wise. Maybe we have a step point in between now and when the Parks and Recreation Commission starts evaluating the uh, applications for next year. And so, Chair Stanek, uh, remind us when Parks and Rec, uh, typically for the last two or three years, has started the evaluation process for these applications. And if you happen to know, I'm sure Rochelle can tell us, uh, when are these applications due from the nonprofit organizations? Yeah, that process was actually, it was modified this year because we, um, we made it earlier for the applicants to come in, and that was so that we would have an, an opportunity for the applicants to actually present their proposal to us before we went and did our rankings. Previous to that, we would have the input of all of the applications. Uh, we would review them, and then we were asked to do rankings essentially before we ever had an opportunity to ask any questions of the applicants. So um, this year we did move those dates in, and, and Rochelle, if you could um, remind us of that. Yes. what those actual dates are. Yeah, so the application period began at the very beginning of January and it was closed on February 1st. Mm -hmm. And then the first meeting for Parks and Recreation Commission was in March. And then the second meeting, which was the evaluation meeting was in April. Okay, great. Well, that's a great process. I, I, I really like to see things you know, move on, on a regular basis like that. Um, okay, uh, Vice Mayor Chow, so this Mayor is your- Paul, if I could just make one other comment and, and that was, in terms of the discussion that we had, um, the commission um, was looking for guidance from council for how do we handle or how would council like to handle those organizations? And do you view there are some that you, would, you have a partnership that you want to continue to fund that you don't want coming through this process? And should there be some other way to identify those projects and, you know, West Valley Community Services is a great example of that. Um, some of the organizations, they 
they have maybe the same event like Audubon or Rotary that the community has valued, but it's a each year it's pretty much the same event but it's in a different year. So we were looking for council's guidance on that in particular. Excellent. Thank you, Chair Stanek. Uh, and, and that dovetails nicely into Vice Mayor Child's point as to an additional potential metric um, with regard to the evaluative process. So I'll bring it back to Vice Mayor Child since she has the floor and this is her line of questioning, uh, as well as the fact that she still has her hand up. So Vice Mayor Child. Um, Chair Stanek, um, I wonder, could you talk a little about the evaluation criteria? How did you guys decide that? And how did you decide maybe a different weight for different criteria? So the evaluation criteria uh, came to us, I think, a year or two ago. And um, there were a number of different criteria. Um, they go through the impact on the com community, the need in the community. Does it uh, match with the city mission? What is the uniqueness? of the application or, or of the project? Um, what are the qualifications of the applicant? Uh, is it a reasonable cost? So some things may cost more, but they are reaching a lot more community members. And there may be some items that don't reach very many community members at all, but they were very low cost. And so balancing a very small project that may have a smaller reach against a very large project, which may be a festival, was a challenge. So I think that reasonable cost comes in there. Um, we look at the organization's effort to acquire other outside funding, and that is part of the application. Uh, we look for the clarity of the applicant, uh, if the application, and if they are returning, what is their, what was their past performance? So I think that particular criteria and some of the others, we had um, a discussion and, and we do separate what are the, who are the new applicants versus the returning applicants. So it was very obvious that there was an intention to be reviewing returning applicants. So that's where we're getting a little bit of a, you know, we've heard that there is this desire to fund more unique and startup opportunities, and, but we also have a limited budget and we have returning applicants that we know are um, have been partners and done very good projects in the past. Mm -hmm. So you mean the criteria were given to you, so it wasn't determined by the commission? It was determined by the commission. It was determined by the commission, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Next we have Council Member Wei, followed by Council Member Wei. Thank you, Mayor Paul. So um, I look at every applicant, even the ones who's not approved, and I look through all the criteria. I'm really pleased with um, the uh, commission, the Park and Recreation Commission's recommendations, because I, I didn't look at their recommendations first, but I rated them, and um, I, I believe they did a really good job, because one major factor that I look is, how do they spend the money? Do they spend the money on administration? on hotels and accommodations, or they spend the money on projects, on what they need to do. And actually, I had a call with um, Chair Stackner, uh, and then, you know, what I matched really matched what they uh, recommended. So I'm really pleased how they did it. And also, I think this year we have a special balance. I think there are four brand new organizations, if Carol, if that's, um, correct me if I'm not uh, right, and there are some returnings, and the returning ones, I especially scrutinize the returning ones. Their projects either benefit uh, year after year, you know, it's a big event that benefits the whole community or like West Valley Community Service benefits, you know, the, a needy group. So I am very happy with, maybe there is room for in, improvement, but I'm really happy with this year's um, uh, project that's being selected to Japan. And the UFRED Museum of Arts, I have to say the bond is for facilities only. They really cannot use it for project like this. So um, there's a big difference between bond and parcel tax. The bond you can only use for facilities, okay, nothing else. So I'm just saying that I reviewed each project independently and I, I really very pleased. Almost all I picked matched what they picked uh, up, to, up to the tooth. And then a lot of them, 
spend a lot of money on administration, which is just really not what we want to do. So I'm just saying that we can, maybe we can improve, open up more, but this year I, I'm really pleased with, uh, uh, with, with the choices. Uh, great, thank you, Council Member Wei. Next we have Council Member Willie. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, I, I like what uh, uh, Councilman Wei just said about the mix that we have, the Parks and Rec, I think has done a pretty good vetting uh, process and came up with something that um, uh, looks good for the, the city and the community. Um, my thinking, you know, just to kind of uh, convey that, I see that there's typically like three categories that I would put the uh, requesters in. Uh, Number one, or the one that I would put first, is groups that provide a significant be uh, benefit to our direct community and uh, which need or uh, uh, really would like additional funding, either need to keep that type of uh, event or activity in our community for which there's a lot of support or maybe increase it um, above what it had been in the past. Um, number, category number two would be uh, the new groups that we kind of talked about that uh, kind of need something to help them get a foothold. You know, you got to get the ball rolling, get the word out, and then more and more people are aware of it and willing to, to help donate and make it sustainable. Uh, group number three would be that uh, new groups that have great intentions, but for which we haven't seen how much community interest there is. And so I think we need to be very careful with our tax dollars before we fund uh, uh, new entities without understanding uh, how much uh, interest in the community there is. I'm sure they have great interest. There's no question about it. but is the community gonna be coming out to support those types of things? So, so that kind of is the thinking that I have there. Then when I look at the one chart that I have, one, one possible uh, uh, question that I have, but I think it's right the way it was. I'm seeing the uh, Bhubaneswar sister city and not getting uh, funding but I'm okay with that because we have, you know, uh, multiple sister cities. Uh, and I think that those need to be addressed, you know, on a fair basis. So if the one didn't know to, to request and we gave it to this one, I, I struggle with that because then perhaps people are left wondering. If... Um, the sister cities were to work together and then come and say, gee whiz, we'd like to each fund, you know, one event at Memorial Park. And so we'll go ahead and try to be fair and spread, spread it. But since we don't have that, I'm okay. But I know our community is, is focused with the uh, sister city and uh, Bhubaneswar. So I'll leave that one. Then I go to... When I look at the, uh, the uh, staff report and it said requested funding, the one I'd like to, to bring up, um, I don't know, maybe uh, we can put that one back up. This isn't the one, uh, the one that was requested funding versus the recommendation. Uh, I've got it, it's actually page one, two, three, four, five, six, it's page six of the most recent handout, June 1. There you go. And so toward the bottom there, about five or six up is Monta Vista High School Speech Booster. Um, I, I would think that if we can help get our schools, specifically our high schools, because that's actually the level that, you know, would be doing some type of project. And if we can, start planting some seeds in our high school. So if the Monta Vista students are thinking, gee whiz, they wanna go beyond the typical classroom. 
and have speech and debate uh, uh, type events, things of that nature. Well, that's, that's interesting. I would think that that might help to encourage other groups, whether it be Monta Vista, Cupertino High, you know, all the high schools. It might be something about the reusable plastics. If they felt that if they were to bring a good idea uh, to the city council that we would be uh, giving serious consideration to supporting them, to me, that, that is good. So I'd like to actually propose, you know, a friendly amendment that uh, we offer, say, they're asking for 13000 Well, um, based on what I know so far, I think that's a bit rich, but maybe 3000 that's going to plant the seed, help them, but maybe get the maybe get the idea going at the other high schools. Well, a group did go to the city council, did get grant funding. How about we do it also? And whatever their idea might be, well, we might worry that we're going to get inundated. I think that's a good thing because then we could go ahead and start deciding which which projects were more worthy, but again, trying to be fair across each of the high schools if it got to that level. Until that happens, when the high schools do bring something and um, it's not a large amount, say 3,000, but I think that would send the message that we care, that uh, we want to help. So a friendly amendment to uh, Monta Vista uh, uh, school speech boosters for 3000 and just to add that to the total amount not reduce the uh, existing funding got it um so madam city clerk can you make a note of that and then when we circle back on comments um i'm gonna make some omnibus changes potentially so uh council member willie uh asks for a modification of the default motion to allocate in addition to that default, $3,000 to Monta Vista High School uh, Speech Boosters Incorporated. Uh, Council Member Willie, did you have any other requests? I, I think I'm pretty good. Like I, the very first part I said, you know, I, I think uh, 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 Councilman Way was very eloquent in, you know, that that uh, this is a uh, very good um, uh, uh, proposal by Parks and Rec, a good vetting process that they've done. So I'm happy with that. Great. Uh, thank you, Council Member Willie. Uh, agreed on the, the Parks and Rec, um, you know, accommodations. Really appreciate, again, the work that they put in. Council Member Moore, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, and really thank you to Chair Stanek and the work that you did uh, with your commission uh, prioritizing. I think it's a, a very complicated task. Uh, I think that if, if council is going to veer into their process and start coming up with our own uh, wants uh, for how uh, you would have equity and balance and goal setting for this process that that is a different matter. And if you were going to be wanting to do that, I would say uh, approve, appropriate $100,000 uh, right out the bat now and then have an ongoing discussion about how you're going to reallocate the funds and, and go back and forth with the Parks and Rec Commission. And uh, so, uh, and that becomes another process. So I think if, if that's what council wants to do, uh, I think we can engage in that, perhaps continue on with this process as it is right now. And if, and if council's wanting to alter it and have input, uh, that's great, but that, that needs another process to get there. So I'm a little concerned about spot changing what the list is now since they've already gone through this. I am particularly concerned with uh, just um, spot granting um, one particular high school. Uh, and you know, while I did ask the question about UFRAP Museum of Art, I have to say uh, I spent a lot of time at Tanza College uh, taking art classes. And I certainly um, uh, 
appreciate and would want to see them receive adequate funding. Um, but that said, uh, my son's school, uh, Sedgwick, had very little art uh, education, and I spent many years volunteering in the classroom there. So uh, I think you're opening floodgates when you ask to have funding given to one particular school. And when my kids were at Sedgwick, it was a Title I school, and we could not afford uh, some time to have um, art education there. So I, I'm concerned about that. Um, so yes, if we want to go back to discussion about the process, then that's another matter. And uh, I kind of don't want to open that uh, up because uh, we're going to be here all night if we start on that. And uh, we, are, we won't get anywhere. So anyway, that's, that's what I think about that. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. Vice Mayor Chow, I see that your hand is up. Um, yeah. And uh, you have spoken, so, I believe, on this item already. So I will um, give myself a, a turn uh, with regard to those initial comments. Um, I am going to try. Uh, so, Rochelle, if you could unshare your screen, I just want to uh, share my own screen for a moment. And again, I apologize if this turns out to be a bit challenging. Um, all right. Okay. Nope, can't do it. So I'm, I'm getting I'm getting boxes that I don't know what the particular item is. So I, I won't I won't uh, attempt to do this uh, sharing. Which, which screen you want, I can find out and then share. Oh, well, if you happen to have page 426 of the original searchable packet from June 1st, uh, then that would be what I was trying to share. Uh, but Rochelle, in the meantime, uh, please go ahead and put up the slide uh, with all of the applicants up there. Um, so um, my... Um, my comment was uh, on this page, th this was a, uh, a table, I think that was basically on a page printed out in, I wanna say eight and a half by, or 11 by 17 size. It was a very long table that didn't take up the entirety of the page. Um, and it had a lot of great information. I mean, for me, it basically had all of the information uh, needed to assess through the lens of the Parks and Recreation Commission in terms of each of the commissioner's rankings. Um, they had a metric chart as well. And so they also had um, a numerical ranking. I believe it was on a scale of uh, zero to 100. Um, they had uh, rankings based upon uh, their relative positions of these, uh, of these organizations applications. Uh, and as I stated before, it was uh, consolidated uh, numbers. So if, 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 if the very top one um, got all ones out of, uh, I think it was 16 or 17 nonprofit uh, applications, then the highest possible ranking would have been five. And the lowest possible ranking, assuming that it was, I, I think 17, uh, would have been, I think 105. Um, and so thank you for sharing that uh, page. My request in the future is that we be able to share this page uh, in a legible format with the public. And so what I would like to ask is that in the future, let's put the, or the organization's names um, and then the, the granular information kind of in those middle columns uh, from where you see, I think Chair Stanek uh, all the way to um, Commissioner Tom Bay rank, I, I think that gets dropped lower. So you could, you know, pull that information. Uh, the the next column, Commissioner total average, uh, important because then you basically see on this scale of I believe zero to one hundred how uh, the 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 commission in total rank these items, um, and then the commissioner ranking, of course, is the you know adding up of each of the rankings. Um, and, and then you've got the requested funding amount. The very last column having the accumulative funding total is highly useful um, because what it helps me do um, is to think, all right, as everyone knows, you know, I was suggesting let's have a, a reasonable allocation of funding over uh, to, to the public uh, through our commissions um, and, and, you know, an allocation of funding for an event uh, that would have taken the place of July 4th fireworks show. Um, you know, I, I won't say it got shot down. I, I want to say that I think that 
one of the aims that I'm trying to achieve here is to get consensus for these items because, you know, frankly, we have a lot going on and we don't need to create, you know, unnecessary vituperativeness, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, funded or, or paid for <laughs> or, or not. But I, I want to be able to, you know, get a sense of the financials in these decisions that we make. So I think this particular slide, this particular page of our packet has a great deal of excellent information. And so I, I would basically just squeeze the table down so that you know when you kind of blow it up widthwise, you can share that information. My thinking here is that if you were to take some of the funding and to think to yourself, okay, this is, this is a particularly um, singular year. Um, I, I think that respecting the evaluations of the Parks and Recreation Commission is extremely important. But what we could do, all right, and, and understanding I've pulled back $500,000 of funding um, from my own um, perspective of what I think would be really good for the community. If we were just to take 10% of that and increase the allocation from a rounding up uh, to the nearest higher 10,000 or $100,000, right? Because if you look at UFAT Museum of Art in the very last line in the yellow, that's 92,000 something. Um, and we were to increase that allocation to 150,000 then you basically capture most of the rest of, uh, of this without, I think, impinging upon the Parks and Recreation Commission's process for evaluation. And I'll tell you what happens when you take out the uh, two nonprofit organizations applications that were ineligible, they were deemed ineligible, you basically capture the entirety of this group with the exception of one which actually, for four out of five of the commissioners, got either a, a last place rank or a next to last place rank. So I, that, that's my inclination because, you know, we need to take measures in order to say to our community, we are, are encouraging activity, do it safely. Um, we are in a good fiscal position. And my view of it is if we've had our Parks and Recreation Commission and the community uh, noticed, and you had these 17 organizations go in with applications that were very thoughtfully uh, rendered and um, presented, and they were very thoughtfully evaluated. This was precisely the kind of process that I was hoping to kickstart within our commissions, right, on a much uh, more modest scale, of course, because I was envisioning $25,000 to each of these commissions. So, so my intuition is to basically say, look, let's just expand the funding. This is a very special year. The uh, message to the community is, yes, we do care about the activities that are going out here. Um, you know, and we invite applications. You know, we invite more people to get involved. If this ends up doubling the number of applications next year, I think we just say, look, this was, this was again, a very unique year. We're trying to encourage activity out there and we appreciate those who have gotten involved. So, so that's, that's my inclination and um, respecting council member Willie's suggestion that we add uh, one particular organization to the tune of 3000 when they're asking for 13,000 and some, and also respecting the inclination of council member Moore who indicated that uh, she wanted to pay respect to the process of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, that's just where I view it. I mean, I, I think our purview um, keeping in mind those those aspects of the process um, is to potentially expand uh, the budgetary formula. So so that's that's what I would proffer up. Um, I'm happy to find the the right um, formula, of course, that would uh, bring us to consensus. All right. So at this point, I see uh, again, Vice Mayor Chow is still up. I, I'm not going to ask uh, for a change to my motion. I'd like to hear another round of commentary. And Vice Mayor Chow, you're followed by Council Member Moore. Vice Mayor Chow, you have the floor. Okay, so here, um, I think it's good that we want to support the school programs, but it's true we have so many schools. And uh, if they, and I think the intent of the grant is to serve all the residents. And the uh, speech boosters from one particular high school, the program would not be open to all Cupertino residents. So I actually don't think this program even qualify for this grant. I don't know how come it's not declared eligible. Actually, when I look at the, the application here is a screenshot from Monta Vista Sports Boosters. They are going to spend $10,000 on admin staff, which already makes it unqualified because I think 
uh, less than they can spend no more than 25% of the funding on admin. And they are spending 10,000 on admin and only 3,000 on scholarships. And then it's the question of should we fund scholarship for Monta Vista students only? And then if we start that, is it fair to the other students? Or should the CT consider scholarship fund? Then that's a separate question. Maybe we should talk about a separate grant for scholarship fund because there will be so many organizations can request that. And this is not a funding to fund a one-time event that will be open to all, all the community members. I think that's it. that was the intent for the grant. So I have a problem with supporting that. Not that I think this organization is not important. This is a very important organization serving Montavista community, uh, Montavista High School, but not Cupertino overall. And that doesn't really fit the, fund, the, the, the criteria of this grant. As for the Kalashi Foundation, this is uh, their, it captured their program. I don't know why they got this very low ranking. So we see that in the chart that Mayor shared earlier, there is combined ranking. I see that there is another chart that has, uh, they're in the 10 categories, I think. But I don't know how, how each organization is ranked by each commissioner so that the combined ranking for this organization is so low because it seems they provide on um, an annual multiple events for different kind of musical musical events sounds great. I so I don't know why they got such low funding. If we are and and I disagree with council member more that this is like spot funding. The reason this is coming to the council agenda is the council has the final decision, and the commissioners provide the recommendation. And then it's always up to the council. It's our authority to change it, to add it, to just hope, just merely blindly follow recommendation. And um, it's not really out of ordinary when we add or delay a program. So I'm, I'm okay with that. And another thing I'd like to point out is uh, something I think we have not, uh, this is, some of these organizations, I think like for, for example, the Fall Festival, it's a wonderful, wonderful festival that um, I, I really thank um, Rotary Club for continuing to host this um, festival. However, this is one of the many festivals that they actually got, I think $20,000 waiver for the commune facilities and the sheriff and the public works and then they are requesting the community funding. I just thought there should be more transparency on how much the city actually is providing for one event versus another. And, and when we separate that, we don't really know. And I, I do think this is an important festival we should support. I just thought there should be more transparency in the process. And I wish we are not really, I, I hope next time it comes to the table, we are not just, just putting the organization name. We are really funding a unique program put on by the organization um, um, under this grant. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. And you know, for the purposes of uh, understanding where we stand vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the motion, so when you pointed out those two organizations, uh, perhaps three, are you making a position on how you would prefer uh, the grant funding to be determined? Or are you really more gearing your um, commentary for future process for future uh, cycles of grant funding? Because I, I just want to make it clear uh, so that I can, I can ask our, our Madam City Clerk to uh, take down your preference as we're going through. Okay. Yeah. So so do you have recommendations? So for this one, I disagree with you, uh, adding the sports uh, booster, but I'm open to adding other organizations. So I swear to expand your uh, screen a little bit. I think oh. maybe we make it more readable. Okay. And yeah. then this is the facility waiver chart that I mentioned. Uh, let's see if I can make that bigger. Yeah. And uh, as we can see, 
the cherry blossom, also one of our wonderful sister city. It's an amazing festival. But then they are getting a waiver of $33,000. And then now if another sister city is requesting a grant, then is it equitable to be denied? This is something we should consider. Like yeah, Fox Festival is getting $17,000 waiver yeah. of other support. This is just something we, we should know that. Right. These are all wonderful festivals. I'm not saying, um, I mean, I, I'm happy that the city is providing um, full support for all these wonderful festivals that we have. Yeah. And I thank right. all the volunteers for putting their time to make all this possible. Right. Let, let, uh, let me focus here. Yeah. Because that, that wasn't an invitation to expound more on a particular organization vis-a-vis -vis other sister cities. Uh, and, and, I, and I wasn't really sure where the sister city comment came from originally, frankly. Um, yeah, they didn't request this year. So. Yeah, they they did or did not because I didn't it see didn't. the. Okay, so 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 my question yeah, was actually yeah. this: If you wanted to um, address the grant funding recommendations from the Parks and Recreation Commission, are you asking for modifications to that, or are you okay with the recommendations by the Parks and Recreation Commission, and you're simply putting in your input on thoughts for process oriented? um ideas in the future actually correction the the ubanashua sister city is here it's listed here that the, actually the city is providing a fee waiver for uh, one of their future events that um, they are have been thinking of being playing so it's already here the yeah, focus here, though, our budget. Funding yeah. application. This is this is a different yeah. budget, right? So for this, yeah, it's a different, and it's already it's already in the budget. I am. I don't have strong opinion about the. I think I'm okay with the Parks and Rec Commission recommendation right now. I just hope that we have a conversation for next year, so we, um, provide more clear direction or maybe have different parts of money for different purpose. Maybe sure. one part particular for schools, one part for startup funds, one part for continued partnership. Right. And so then it's clear, yeah. Okay, right. very good. Thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Council Member Moore. Okay, so I'm not really sure, Mayor Paul, what you ended up with. It looked like you were trying to add on more more projects, and I am reluctant to do that beyond the 100,000 mark. I think that uh, the Parks and Rec Commission did a great job uh, selecting those top projects, and when you get past that initial list, it starts getting into um, programs or projects which have, or I have issues with whether or not it's got equity and balance and, and uh, our goals incorporated into those selections. And uh, so when you have a list of, of projects that are in the $100,000 mark and one is pulled out of the other list that didn't, that didn't make it and then put into the top list, that's what I'm referring to. That's like a spot grant. So you're pulling something out of work, pushing it up. And then the selection of that particular project, um, which which is for one high school, I think that gets into the, the can of worms of what are our goals here and do we want to visit what our goals are um, and what the process is like. And I don't think that at this moment, at the 11th hour, that this is the best time to try to open up that discussion. I think that's a that's a whole discussion on its own for what, how you want this process to look. So I'm okay with the first 100,000 that they selected. Uh, if you're going to go beyond that, I would want, an, want a discussion. And it could be that, that you go into the budget and, and you've got your cultural events section of the budget at uh, 433,000 that you say, well, we know that this isn't gonna happen. So we want to appropriate $100,000 go for another round of, of grant funding and we want to make sure that equity is really, really incorporated so that we don't have one high school receiving all the grant funding because they knew that they could do it and maybe the other ones didn't or 
wow, we've got Fremont Union High School District. Is this really fair that we're only going to provide funding for the high schools which are in Cupertino boundaries? Those kinds of issues. So it might be that you want to say, go for another round of, uh, go for the first, the first hundred thousand, and say we want to do another hundred thousand, and call for applicants and let everybody know. Um, so if you if you do want to have the schools, let them let them all know. But I think that's that because of the borders um, for the school district, I think that's a really tricky uh, place to put your money. Anyway, so that is my collection of thoughts on that at the moment. So okay. I'd like to stop at 100,000. Uh, great, thank you, Council Member Moore. Council Member Wayne. So I'll put a couple last minute thoughts on it. I did look at every um, application. So for the uh, one that Mayor Chow, uh, Vice Mayor Chow mentioned the color I forgot the dance group, 50% of them goes to artist fees. So that's administration. So I look at the balance and then I really love the Monta Vista. I like to support schools, but 10,000 goes to administration. Only 3,000 goes to scholarships to, to the kids. So that's how I think Park and Recreation put a lot of efforts into how they evaluate things. We have applications and I, I have no problem funding more because if we have money, it'd be great to fund more. And um, I. I think Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Paul's suggestion to fund more is really good. But I also like uh, uh, um, Council Member Moore's suggestion, if we fund this first round, if we have more money, we can open up for the second round. And so I, I'm, I'm okay with both. But I, I just think that the Park Recreation look at the application, did a really good job of vesting out, you know, the ones that really is for project and covers a lot of community events, is for the community. So they really dealt up into it. So I just think that they did a really good job. And I have no objection that's if we have more money, like turn out another funding, round of funding. And I actually like um, um, Council Member uh, Willie's suggestion, like fund the amount of $3,000 because that is for the kids. The 10000 is for administration. And as for equity, we did put this out for everyone. If other schools did not come with the application, I don't think the city or park recreation can be faulted for that because they didn't look for it. So maybe we add a 3,000. If we had a second round, other schools would come up with great, great projects. So I have no objection that adding the 3,000 either. So um, that's my comment. I'm going to leave. Mayor Paul, you're the one who made the motion, so I'm going to leave you to, to whether you want to stay or you want to add or you want to, um, I, I would be fine with either. Right. Thank you, Council Member Way. Council Member Will. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, great additional input. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, for uh, pointing out the details of the uh, Monta Vista speech uh, request. So in, in that regard, I, I'd still be uh, an advocate for our, specifically for our high school. I could, in the future, I think I could go beyond that and say, gee whiz, what might we be able to do for our uh, CUSD? But I, I don't want to go there today. So with that, changing that friendly amendment so that you know, the 3,000 would uh, only be allowed to be used for that final category uh, scholarship. Now, to expand on that just a little bit, uh, I'm real happy that uh, 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 Councilman Way is uh, so connected. You know, I'm not sure if she's still on the high school board, but if she, if she could, uh, with her connections then, if she could put the, uh, the, the word out that at least one councilman is very interested in inspiring our youth, inspiring our youth. I'm not necessarily in the future wanting to focus on scholarships where, um, you know, one student is, you know, a lot of students try and then one student or two students get this scholarship. I'm more interested in inspiring the youth in their, in their activities during the high school uh, period. And whether it's uh, uh, something on global warming or it's something on artistic uh, nature, if, if the high schools had uh, the message that the city council wants to support extracurricular activities and bring forth ideas, and then we would decide where we might want to fund something for each of the schools, providing each one has at least one, but maybe several different proposals. 
it, it might be a, a soapbox derby that they do after school and trying to uh, make it super high tech or something, whatever it is. But in the future, so I want to put that message out to Councilman Way, you know, you know, let the schools know that at least one of us or two of us, you know, are very interested in helping our, our youth in that regard. So I'll leave the friendly amendment with the directive that it would just be the 3,000 as defined by that last item. And I'm open to uh, the mayor's concept of um, in this special year, who would have foreseen? The kids have been locked inside. The groups have been locked inside. We've got to get those engines moving again. And if some additional funding will help to, to move things a little bit quicker, I, I think we are in a good position. So I, I'm open to it. I'm also listening to all councilmen with their uh, pros and cons, and I, I really value it. So uh, I'm not shortchanging anything there. Thank you for your, uh, your different thoughts, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Council Member Willie. Uh, Vice Mayor Chad, you do have your hand up. I'm gonna go, uh, since it's uh, my turn in the rotation uh, in this second round of comments. So um, thank you, Council Member Willie. My, my thought on it right now, because it doesn't seem like I, I would necessarily even be able to get to a majority uh, for a $150,000 allocation, as opposed to uh, one that tops out at 100. Uh, my thought on it is to have you submit a substitute motion on your $3,000 allocation and see uh, uh, if there could be a second. I will second that as a substitute motion, but if that fails, at least we have the fallback of my original motion, which is the Parks and Rec uh, recommendation. Um, so I'll, I'll provide you the opportunity uh, to, to make that um, upon the conclusion of my remarks uh, in, this, in, in this round of remarks. I, I think I, I do want to address something that was indicated uh, in, in this round, I think that if you're if you're going to look at things um, in terms of um, you know a, a new approach, um, it, it's important to think about you know where we where we sit, um, and I, I think it's good policy to uh, think to yourself, okay, what can we be doing to kickstart our community? Right, and also I think it's also very important to think about it from a, a longer-term perspective, such as uh, incentives. Right, so if you had, if you have 16, uh, if you have 17 applicants, two are not eligible because of meeting not not meeting minimal eligibility requirements. You're left with 15, and 14 actually get funded in this very unusual year, which you can justify. I think what that ends up doing is that it actually incentivizes more applications to come in next year, but you advertise the understanding that, look, it's not gonna be a 90 plus percentage acceptance rate. Uh, last year was very unusual. Uh, so, so you get that message out there and then that's how you get that kind of excitement for this process and the buy-in and the, and, and the participation uh, and knowledge of what we are doing here. Um, and I'm very proud of that process. I, I think that as I sit here, when I think about how things were six years ago, I'm not exaggerating when I say that we had no evaluation process. It didn't go through Parks and Recreation. People submitted the applications. And I think actually we were able to say something, I, I didn't, but you know, other, other people on the dais would say, you know, for example, you know, sitting where I sit now, um, considering our earlier meeting today, uh, or early, earlier meeting this week on Tuesday, you know, I gave a proclamation to uh, a, an LGBTQ uh, plus month for June um, and uh, former supervisor Ken Yeager gave a presentation about a virtual museum, right, in Silicon Valley. And then we also had Women SV. So as I sit here today, if this were six years ago, I could actually say, you know what, I'd like to give $5,000 to Women SV as well as $5,000 uh, to this LGBTQ plus virtual museum. And we would actually pass that, okay? So if you were to say, you know, for instance, you know, there, there are some irregularities in a process. If you're, if you're wanting to tweak um, some recommendations from Parks and Rec, I simply don't accept that because I think I have actually seen uh, actual structural infirmities in terms of how the process goes. 
Um, I, I agree with Vice Mayor Chow. We have advisorial commissions and, and deeply respect the work that they do, but we also have perspectives and decisional authority as well. Um, in, in so far as whether it is fair to grant funding um, to one school when there are other schools, I mean, I think that's a bit of an illogical uh, fallacy because what you end up saying is that effectively, you know, writ large to any grant funding, you would say, well, this organization applied, uh, why should we grant this organization money when there are a dozen other organizations out there that, that, that are equally well situated uh, and they could have applied and they could have, well, <laughs> I, I think the right way to go about it is to create an incentive structure. Um, and if you want, you know, people in high schools to apply next year, you give Monta Vista, uh, this organization, some funding and other people go, wow, the Cupertino City Council really cares um, and they're evaluating. So next year you may get a Cupertino High School application and a Homestead High School application. And that's how you get the ball rolling on, on awareness um, and, and pride in process. So I, I absolutely have that pride in process. I, I thank everyone for participating in it. And I think that, um, you know, for me, it's an agglomeration of excellent ideas. Everyone is legitimate in perspective. I'm fine with the original motion and I would be fine with supporting um, the substitute motion as well, which at this time I will ask council member Willie to make. Oh, fine. my final point is this. Um, if you were to look at the ranking system, um, the next organization down on that list actually is this Monta Vista group. Yep. And right. And, and if you add 3,000 to the 92,000, you're actually budgetarily within that $100,000 threshold. So um, council member Willie, would you like to make that substitute motion at this point? Yes, I'd like to make the substitute motion to accept the Parks and Rec recommended funding with the addition of $3,000 added uh, for the Monta Vista speech uh, boosters for their scholarship line item. Excellent, thank you, um, Council Member Willie. I will go ahead and second your substitute motion. Uh, we have commentary now in the order of Vice Mayor Chow, Council Member Moore, Vice Mayor Chow. Okay, so I'd like to share the community funding grant policy the council adopted, where we say the eligibility requirement is to benefit Cupertino community, be awarded only once per project. And uh, of course, more than 75% of requested funding is for directed uh, service versus administrative costs. That's where I got that. And then here, restriction and guidelines. Proceeds generated from the funded activity may only be used for the conducted activity. So if any activity generated um, become a fundraising, the fund generated could only be used for this activity. It cannot be used, let's say, funding operational costs for, of an organization. And admission or participation in the event must be free of charge for Cupertino residents. So then that means, I mean, I think it's, uh, I like the idea of providing scholarship for the sports boosters, especially they are stating that scholarship is for a student who couldn't afford the summer camp to attend the summer camp. I, I like that goal. However, I am a little concerned it doesn't really fit the adopted community grant guideline that we have, and I think we, I'm okay with funding that 3,000, but we are not following our guideline. And another thing is here, I think the Parks and Rec Commission are not evaluating the project according to this guideline also. Here is this, applications will be sorted into two categories, new applicants and past new and past recipients. I think we kind of discussed that last year. We would separate them, evaluate them separately. And applications in each category will be evaluated separately. And we are not seeing that done this year. So um, I well, fair, fair don't know. Sorry. Yeah. We do have the, the chair of the Parks and Recreation Commission um, here. Um, Chair uh, Stanek, did, did you want to speak to that? Perhaps that was a reason consideration or, uh, you know, perhaps it was just, you know, not thought of or 
Um, perhaps we can also provide direction to let's look at the guidelines um, more closely. And if we're talking yeah. about eligibility, you know, it, did you want to speak to the comments made by Vice Mayor Chow here? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor, as well. If Rochelle could go to the next slide after the one that um, shows the with the yellow at the top, I think it's page two of uh, Exhibit D, and you will see the breakout of the new and the returning. So we actually, we, we cut this in a lot of different ways per the policy. And so the one that was presented, so this is, this is the slide that shows the new as well as broken out by the various tiers of the dollars. And so we absolutely did look at new and returning and how, um, how did that look? And how did that factor ultimately into the evaluations, Chair Stanek? Uh -huh. Okay, that's good to know. So, uh, so it was very important that we, we do have a mix. Great. Okay, great. Uh, so essentially they were treated as guidelines and they were most certainly evaluated. Um, and we thank you for putting that data in front of us here. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, bring it back. Could to I make, uh, just one other um, comment, yes. Mayor Paul, and that was on the new projects. I, I think I mentioned it before, but maybe I, I wasn't clear enough. We considered a project new if it was an event. It might have been the same event, but if it's in a different year, we considered that a new project. Um, what? Because they're okay. discrete events. And so that, that was our interpretation. If we, if we should do something different, we'd certainly be open to that um, guidance from you. Interesting, okay, uh, excellent. Um, Vice Mayor Chow, that, that's an interesting point actually. Um, so a new project is considered something new if it's in a different year. Do you have any interest in asking for um, an amendment to the substitute motion on the table to include direction as to how to interpret a particular provision with regard to whether a project is new, for instance. I think we should revisit the guideline. If we are not following it, maybe it's time to update it. Okay, but not, not tonight, right? Yeah, not tonight. Um, okay, in the very good. And then for the scholarship, I wish we separate that. I'm, op I'm open to providing separate scholarship funds for people to apply for students who are underprivileged to attend the summer camps or this kind of um, in this kind of uh, speech booster events, um, because the intent of the community grant is event that open to everyone, but this is it is something that's not open to every student but one high school, so it's different, but it's something good to do, so. Right, and, and this is another interpretive area as well where, you know, and I agree it's good to have a session probably before the end of the year um, to, to, to clarify um, our, our expectations of those guidelines. I, you know, for instance, is, is new versus um, repeating uh, something preclusive with regard to having benefit to Cupertino community and free to the community, are those um, also preclusive? Would that end up, if you don't meet this particular guideline, uh, would that render an application ineligible? So, so those are very legitimate items to look at. But as you know, Council Moore, uh, who has her hand raised next, uh, has stated, if we get into uh, weeds talking about uh, individual projects even, we may be here for a good long time. So Vice Mayor Chow, um, do you have any further commentary uh, here at this point before we move on to Vice Mayor Moore? No, thank oh, sorry. you. Sorry, Council Member Moore. <clears throat> okay, great, thanks. Council Member Moore. You have the floor. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor Paul, I was wondering if you could uh, put, have the screen come back so I can tell where we are with, with the funding. Um, I'm a little concerned. Uh, I have this, this, the same issues with a single high school uh, having uh, the benefit uh, go there. Um, that, uh, that's really 
that's really bothering me. I think if you want to give money to FUHSD that you, you can certainly uh, do that um, and have it distributed equitably between the, the, um, the different high schools. Uh, establish, there's probably scholarship funds at each high school which you could direct and, and uh, say it's for under, underprivileged students at each of the high schools and have that uh, funding directed um, as you want it. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this organization. You were trying to go beyond the 100,000. So what, what, where do we stand on that? It's off the table. Um, Rochelle, so, if you could put the next slide down. Um, so you'll notice that the, uh, the, the, this doesn't quite capture the, really the appropriate slide is page 426 out of the omnibus packet from June 1st. But, but, but let me try to um, uh, give you, the, the right uh, direction here. So Monta Vista High School speech boosters, I think five lines from the bottom, 13,024. Um, so that would be added to the 92,000 to make the total approximately 95,000. Um, and and this, this was the next line down. I'm hearing what you're saying in terms of equity. Uh, I, you know, I, I've addressed my you know, viewpoint on that. I, I think we both have legitimate viewpoints. I'm not gonna rehash um, my you know, rebuttal, so to speak on that. Um, but in terms of my idea that Let's go ahead. My idea is basically this, okay? Let's take in everything. All right, Curry Key, the very last one, you know, I think it got like a 17, a 16, a 16, a 17, and then someone provided a, a seven ranking, okay? Um, I, 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 I feel comfortable with that as, you know, basically saying, you know, 150,000, we're actually boosting the budget by, you know, some 50%. Um, although again, you know, I was asking for 500,000. Uh, previously, we've already been through an evaluative ranking process here. Um, but, you know, again, that motion is not on the table either as a substitute motion or the original motion. Um, and I want to get to consensus and to be able to, um, you know, make everyone feel like they can support what's going forward. So I, I didn't hear that at all uh, the first time I had mentioned it. So, so it's off the table. Um, but since you ask, I was basically asking for an acceptance of every one of the organizational applications to the full funding request. Uh, except for the two deemed ineligible and the one ranked at the very bottom uh, on the collective rankings of the Parks and Recreation Commission. So, so my, my preference is that if, if you want, like I'll say it again, um, if you want to give money to the high schools, uh, uh, find a way to do it equitably uh, between them right. rather than uh, selecting to give scholarships uh, for people who are involved with this particular uh, speech um, organization at one school um right. and okay go. well i mean since you say it a third time let me say let me give my reason a second time i i think everyone had an equitable opportunity to apply here and if you were to award the money here to the monta vista organization then that's the most effective um that's the most effective uh, advertising that you can do to spur on future applications from other high schools um, um you may know, I ask, Mayor Paul, have we given money to uh, individual high schools in the past? Maybe um, Chair Stanek knows. Uh, Chair Stanek, do you have a recollection? I, I don't remember student organizations or high school affiliated organizations receiving this type of community grant funding in the last several years. No, no, not, it's not since it's been with Parks and Rec, and I don't think we saw it in the history, but that's my recollection. Yeah. So, well, in any event, you know, like I say, it's not on the table, you know, you've reiterated your reasons, I've repeated mine. And so, you know, uh, if there are no other further comments at this point, I do see Vice Mayor Chow has her hand raised again. I'll go to Council Member Wei since she did not. Oh, let me go back to Council Member Moore. Did you have your uh, comments completed uh, at this point? Okay, so we are standing with the, it's the like 92,900 plus you're requesting the $3,000 go to Monta Vista High School Speech Incorporated. Uh, I seconded the substitute motion of council member Willie. And so yes, if we do uh, conduct a, a vote for the motion on the table, that's what- Could I propose a, sub, a, mo, a substitute motion? Uh, no, yeah. you can only have two motions. Um, Madam City Attorney, you can correct me on this. My understanding of Rosenberg's rules is that you can have two motions on the table, although I'm not remembering whether perhaps you can have a third. I believe it's three, Mayor. Okay, so can you have, you can have a substitute to the substitute, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, I, you know, 
I, I'm not 100 percent that's accurate, but um, I, I think we can keep that in mind. I'll double check. Uh, let me let me go to Council Member Way first um, because Council Member Way uh, hasn't had an opportunity this round uh, to make a comment. Council Member Way, did you have a Thank comment? Yes. Very short comment. Thank you, Mayor Paul. Um, I, I I have to agree with Ed on your comment because if we say it has to be equitable, then it means all five high schools have to apply in order for another school to get funding. I think there's a, a flaw in that um, theory. So this time I have to agree with you because we if we granted $3,000, it would be incentive for other schools to come and apply, and which is the first time, which is great. We, we like to do something new and something incentive for our students. So I really think um, Council Member Willie's suggestion is, is really good. Although it's one school, but we can't fault because other four schools did not apply, but this is an incentive for them to, uh, to do it. And we can forever say we have to have five high schools in order to fund any one particular school. I just think it, it's okay to have a first for a $3,000 scholarship to uh, a group of students. Okay, understood, thank you, Council Member Wei. Vice Mayor Chow, you wanted to put a third motion on the table, a substitute to the substitute motion, and what yeah. is that? So, uh, first, uh, responding to Council Member Wei, this is not equitable because you are rewarding rule breakers. It does, the guideline does not say we would fund scholarship funding. That's not the intent of the, so if someone breaks the rule, we like the project, and now we are granting them, you are rewarding rule breakers. Yes, it's innovative use of the grant, but that, that's not the intent. So my substitute motion is trying to provide that scholarships that I think is great. So I would like us to approve the Parks and Rec recommendation for the top, I think 10, um, applicants and plus allocate uh, 20,000 scholarship funding on um, for for anyone to apply for uh, to support underprivileged students to participate in extracurricular activities. Um, uh, Madam City Attorney, is that um, an acceptable motion from your perspective given the notice requirements to the public? Um, well, I mean, I think practically we don't have a procedure set up yet to um, have additional, another round of applications, um, so. Can we perhaps provide direction to staff to look into Yes, that? I think that's, I think that's true. Um, yeah. I mean, I, just whatever gradation of acceptability would. I, 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 yeah, I think it's within the scope that you're saying, look, we're not doing these grants. Instead, we want to consider additional grants, you know, actually look into funds that have been allocated. So I think that's fair within the scope and providing direction to staff to do that. Okay. Vice Mayor Chow, uh, I will second your motion if you modify it to be that you are taking the staff recommendation of the Parks and Recreation uh, Commission's recommendations. Um, and direct staff to look into uh, a possible $20,000 grant funding mechanism for um, scholarship to underprivileged students to participate in particular activities. Um, so would you would you be willing to make your motion that? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll second that. For the, that's the second substitute motion. Did you have any further commentary at this point? I have a hand raised from uh, Council Member Willie as well as from Council Member Moore. Uh, Council Member Willie. Yeah, so I'll try to be uh, brief. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I do really uh, uh, respect laws. You know, we all do that. Guidelines are not laws in my view. They're guidelines. Without guidelines, how do people really know um, what is um, suggested? What is the guidelines, you know? They need something to, to bring forth, uh, you know, a proposal. And so a guideline is a guideline. I do think we should revisit the guidelines by the end of the year. I do believe that times have changed. Um, the city has other priorities or new priorities that need to also be considered. And um, we know that schools are hugely important to our community 
And I would like them not to be left out of the grant process, but yet, you know, where, where are they in the mix? And trying to, to plant a seed and spur that, I think, is great. And I like Vice Mayor Zhao's um, concept for scholarship. I would hope in the future, uh, Councilman Wei would be conveying the message to the high school that project type stuff, study type, study type uh, things that they would not get in their normal uh, curriculum, bring it forth so that the city council can take an interest and possibly help move it along. And it would be unique to the, to the year. And somebody from Cupertino High may want high tech and need uh, a computer or multiple computers. Somebody from Homestead may say it's going to be an art competition. And, you know, you can't really say, well, gee whiz, either we give the, the uh, high tech one only the thousand dollars that the art wants, or we give the art one five thousand dollars that the uh, tech one needs. And so bring your ideas forward and then let us kind of uh, award and allocate based on that that we think uh, would inspire them and other groups that follow. So, Chancellor Willie, as you sit here right now, are you inclined to support this, the uh, second substitute motion on the table? Sure, I, I support that. I think that that's uh, uh, sufficient. Okay, with, yeah, that, thank you. With the understanding that passes, that your substitute motion will not be voted upon. Okay, that's fine. It's fine, okay. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Willie. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you in the middle of your comments. Did you want no, to that, that, say No, that was it. Just, you know, um, I, I hear, like I said, I'm very uh, 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 focused on the council's um, comments and their thoughts. And so um, it, it's kind of a little bit of a challenge for us to, to bring forth our individual ideas. But, you know, we're, we're all unique individuals trying to um, help our community in the way we see possible. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Willie. Our next um, hand up is from Councilmember Moore. You have the floor. While I appreciate and support the Vice Mayor's uh, substitute motion, uh, it is noted that we are getting out of the, the guidelines um, in doing so, but I do support it. So oh, well. I think the guidelines need to be revisited, it <laughs> sounds like. Right. Well, thank you, Councilmember Moore. And, you know, I hope this can wrap it up. Um, I, I, think, I think it's a great suggestion and um, agree the guidelines need to be revisited. I think we give staff sufficient, ample amounts of time, especially given everything that's going on in our city right now, uh, to bring back a session uh, before the end of the calendar year. And uh, having examined this particular request for the $20,000, um, because, of course, we don't necessarily want to midstream create a whole new evaluation process um, without good notice to uh, to the public. And I will I will say that those organizations that I had mentioned uh, earlier in this conversation, I will encourage them to apply, uh, just like we should be pocketing all of these ideas, excellent ideas and comments um, and direction to staff to look into the possibility in the future um, of this allocation of $20,000 to underprivileged students. Um, and and bring it back uh, to our next cycle. So uh, thank you very much. I actually see uh, three hands raised now. And so um, let's let's just make this the final round of commentary. Uh, and then I'm gonna ask uh, for a vote. And if anyone objects, of course, we can take a vote on calling the question. But uh, we have Vice Mayor Chow, Council Member Wei, followed by Council Member Moore. Vice Mayor Chow. Hey, first the comment, then a suggestion. First, I want to clarify that. The reason I think it's not equitable right now is Another person might look at the guideline and did the, did the homework and find out they don't qualify. And now here we have an organization who submitted in not only their administrative cost is over 35% and they are to applying for a scholarship that wasn't what the grant was meant for. So it's inequitable. The other person might not apply because they read the guideline. So, and then, okay, second suggestion is I think our staff is overwhelmed, uh, will be overwhelmed next year, and then maybe as we should form a subcommittee to come back with a recommendation on that for the council to consider. 
um, rather than staff were trying to work this out. Maybe that way, at least that will be a proposal to council members support. Um, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, and if you want to make that a, an amendment to your motion, um, I, I would go ahead and support it and suggest that the subcommittee be comprised of yourself and council member Moore. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. I should be muted. <laughs> would you like to make that an amendment, Vice Mayor Chow? Um, okay, council member Moore. Or council member way, or council, I don't know who 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 would volunteer to be on the subcommittee. Or council member Whaley, who really wants the scholarship too. Yeah. Um, I have okay. some time this summer. I can do it. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Um, well, you'll, you'll just bring us back a, a better agenda item when it comes back. You know, so you can work yeah. Well, mm -hmm. That's actually what it is. Okay, so yeah. you've amended. Um, so basically, it's staff recommendation plus the looking into the twenty thousand direction to staff look for that, and uh, you and Councilmember Moore form a subcommittee uh, to go over uh, the the regulations and procedures and evaluation. Uh, yeah, so we, the subcommittee would review the uh, community grant guideline to bring back a recommendation and also maybe a, and, and also a recommendation on the scholarship fund how. How that should be administered and for what purpose. Great, wonderful. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Next, we have Council Member Wei followed by Council Member Moore. Okay, that'll be my last comment. I really like where this is going and we're going to give scholarships. I just would like to really um, put that $3,000 gift to the Mount Lisa <laughs> as an incentive. And it's $3,000, not a lot, and they did apply and they did set a good example so if we can just give three thousand now since it's, we're going to do the scholarships so maybe that will give the schools really great incentives i would really hope that we could because we only get a 92 500 now so we're going to 90 500 95 thousand since so we under our 100 thousand i'm just hoping that maybe we can get some consensus put that back in and have the scholarship uh, team and then have the subcommittee to work on it it would be really a good incentive ex incentives well, Councilor Wei, for, for that, that last attempt. Um, well, so procedurally, we have the second substitute motion on the table from Vice Mayor Chow. And so it's really up to Vice Mayor Chow whether she would accept that. As a I understand amendment. that, yes. So uh, we'll, we'll go to Vice Mayor Chow. Would, would you accept that as a friendly amendment to the second substitute motion that's on the table? So according to the application, the $3,000 they specify it's initiate a speech scholarship to provide financial aid to deserving Monta Vista high school students to particip participate in summer camp and tournaments and for recognizing excellence and outstanding contributions to public speaking. I'm okay with that actually. <laughs> You're actually okay with that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I want to follow the rule, but then, um, yeah. You know, I would really have loved to get to five, five, five zero. Oh. I, I think we're at four one on this. I, I'll go ahead and um, accept that as uh, the seconder. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think it's a bit unfortunate if we're not going to be get, getting unanimity. I, I think that your original second substituted motion uh, would have gotten a five zero vote. If that changes your mind with regard to um, the advisability of accepting that, um, but I do support the allocation, so Maybe I will. Let's hear from Council Member Moore. I want to see what she thinks. Okay, very good, uh, Council Member Moore. You have the floor. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right about the four one. So we we had a beautiful um, speech uh, presentation from uh, uh, Ruth Darlene uh, from. Women SV uh, this week uh, and their mission, we empower survivors, train providers and educate the community to break the cycle of covert abuse in intimate partner relationships so that every woman and child can exercise their fundamental human right to be free and safe in their own home. Uh, to me, if we were going to do a spot $3,000, I'd rather we gave it to um, Women SV. And, uh, and you're right about the 4-1. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, Councilmember Moore. Vice Mayor Chow, does that change your inclination uh, to keep the um, second substitute motion as amended on the on the table at this time? 
So it sounds like, yeah, I was thinking that this 3,000, I am okay with granting, but I have a problem with granting under community grant uh, umbrella, umbrella because it doesn't really qualify. So it could be a separate grant that we are giving um, that usually we get like from West Valley Community Service, we might in addition to the annual process. Then Council Member Moore is proposing maybe we also grant to the Silicon Valley woman. Then well, I'm fairly certain we can't then do that. That's kind of getting messy. <laughs> Well, okay, fine. So this is what I suggest. I suggest that you revert back to your second substitute motion um, as amended prior to this amendment, and then we vote separately on the three thousand dollar allocation to Madam Vice Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Madam City Clerk, just to clarify, the motion on the table is um, Vice Mayor Chow's second substitute motion after the first amendment, and the second st substitute motion was. Um, the staff recommendation plus a direction to uh, staff to look into a $20,000 allocation in the future uh, in an evaluative process. Um, and the amendment to that was to create a subcommittee as well, comprised of Vice Mayor Chow and, and Council Member Moore uh, to look into a process and procedure for the upcoming cycle of grant funding um, in the next calendar year. So um, did I capture everything in the second substitute, motion, sub, second substitute motion as amended? Was there anything, was there any other detail that I didn't capture? Council member Moore, did you okay. have any uh, Yeah, Mayor Paul, I'm just curious how, so will the vice mayor and myself be coming up with a way for the $20,000 to be um, allocated? Is that how that's going to work? Because my concern is that if you're going to be taking the $3,000 that, that you're actually then if there were other qualifying um, programs at Monta Vista area that you might be then already taking their $3,000 that they would have and, so and being done with it. This motion doesn't include the 3,000. So we will start from the blank slate. Anyone will decide the guideline, whoever wants to get the scholarship would reapply under the new guideline that we decide. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so my concern is that the suggestion of having the three thousand uh, dollars granted for uh, scholarships is going to come right after this vote, and then and then you're going to have twenty thousand plus the three thousand for for scholarships. Is that uh, my understanding? Well, that correctly? Okay. So understand understand what the twenty thousand dollar part is. It is not an allocation. It is is it is a direction to staff to look into. Uh, the possibility of that into in a, in a future grant funding cycle, um, and then the the subcommittee comprised of yourself and Vice Mayor Chow is going to look into some of the uh, details and contours as to you know the specific scope. Do you go and essentially create the staff report when we look at this before the end of the year? Uh, I leave it up to the subcommittee and your bandwidth and your ability to you know hash that out with staff um, between now and then. Um, but, but no, we're not allocating 20000 and this 3000 that we will be voting on after this motion on the table um, is, is, is part of the current cycles of funding. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, okay, great. Um, let me ask Madam City Clerk to uh, conduct a roll call vote for this motion that's on the table right now. Madam City Clerk. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Way? Aye. Councilmember Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'll, I'll give you the first um, for first opportunity, uh, Council Member Willie, since this is your original idea, um, for $3,000 uh, grant funding uh, allocation under the current cycle to the Monta Vista student group for their application. Would you like to have a motion? Yes. Um, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, so moved. So move. That, um, okay. would anyone like to second? Council Member Way, you have your hand raised? I'll, I'll second that, thank you. All right, um, I think we've shared our viewpoints. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised. And so I'll ask our city clerk uh, to conduct a roll call vote on this motion. Madam city clerk, please conduct that roll call vote. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. 
Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, well, great. Well, thank you uh, for, for the unanimous support on that item. We are now on to uh, that aspect of our continued study session that deals with the allocation uh, to a uh, line item on our uh, ongoing budgets for $20,000 to the Cupertino Historical Society. Uh, Madam City Manager, does uh, staff have anything to add to that encapsulation before we proceed with our council deliberation on this aspect of the continued item? I would defer that to Rochelle Sanders. And so, okay. welcome back, Rochelle. Thank you. We don't have anything extra to add, but we are here for any questions you may have. Okay, very good. I will go ahead and entertain a default motion. The default, I believe, uh, off the staff recommendation is that we keep the item on uh, in its uh, full amount, $20,000, as a line item in our budgets ongoing. Vice Mayor Chow, would you like to make that motion? Yeah, I'd like to make that motion to keep it as a line item. Would anyone like to second Vice Mayor Chow's motion? I'll second. Council Member Willie seconds. Very good. So we have a motion and a second on the table. I see Vice Mayor Chow has the first hand raised as commentary on this motion. Vice Mayor Chow. Um, so for, I think, I think history is important for a city, and I, I think it, in fact in 2019 it was may, maybe I and uh, Council Member Willie's idea that that entertain the line item, and I. And um, that it's been two years. I kind of, I envision that to be a partnership with historical society where the city has visibility on where the program is going, how it's spent. And I, I hear that they are doing a lot of wonderful things. However, this $20,000 grant hasn't um, enabled that partnership. And then I, I'm concerned with the current uh, report that provided the twenty thousand dollars was spent to maintain a property or that the city doesn't even own. Then I am concerned about that kind of spending. But because initially this came from community grant, so I, my idea has always been this would. Uh, enable um, community events, more collecting of maybe um, con contemporary histories from Cupertino, really keeping us uh, um, on tap with all the evolution of the wonderful people that formed Cupertino over the years. Um, so I looked into Saratoga, how their historic society museum was funded their city owned the site of the historic museum. Therefore, the city staff does the maintenance and the city actually doesn't provide any funding for the museum. The operational cost is all funded by their foundation and their, they have their own fundraising. And the, they, the city does fund the one festival that they help organize um, through this similar community grant funding process. And then they also have Hakon Garden, the Japanese garden, which the city provide $25,000 funding. And the, con the city also owns that land, so it's considered a city park. However, the foundation owns the buildings. So the building's maintenance is all um, funded by the foundation hiring other people to maintain those buildings and the gardens. And they do have two council members sitting on the Hakan Garden uh, Foundation. Um, so I thought that might be something worth looking into. As for what kind of funding, um, I've been thinking, I'm concerned with funding maintenance. However, this is a departure from the community grant, but if the funding is for staffing for the historical society. I'm actually okay with that. If the city, and maybe two council members sit on the board to actually help direct the direction, then um, this staffing really is making all the fundraising possible. Um, so, so it's not that where they're relying on the city for funding, but 
we are providing funding for staffing to to um, broaden their outreach so they might have um, have better capability to get more fundraising to have more act activity and really keep history for Cupertino then that might be something worth considering so yeah okay thank you vice mayor Chow I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to, uh, to uh, share their initial thoughts on this. So we have uh, Council Member Moore with a hand raised next. Council Member Moore. Actually, I think that this this particular item should be um, continued and have a, a bit of a study session on it in order to uh, go over what we want out of our relationship with the Cupertino um, Historical Society. Uh, my concern uh, is primarily that I have uh, some information from different members of the public and it's and it it's like I have one side of the story and then I have another side of the story and so I'd like to see this kind of aired out and the reason why is that it, this the story seems to start with the historical society was uh, received the Snyder Hammond house for for one dollar um, it's sitting on an acre of land it has a tax exemption there's so there's no property tax they only have to pay you know a few hundred dollars a year for that uh, and and then there's the question of how much is that land actually worth at an, at one acre in Cupertino is that a six million dollar uh, piece of property I don't know um, but going back to 2012 there there was an EIR for um, a Lehigh plan and the condition was that um, one of the conditions was that they would uh, be legally bound uh, to not have any occupancy of the, the caretaker's residence. So in 2012, uh, a Lehigh employee who was also a member of the Cupertino Historical Society um, signed one of the documents uh, and that um, was a lease agreement with Lehigh between the Historical Society and Lehigh so that they would um, pay the Historical Society $120,000 and that Historical Society would be allowed to use the building for um, storage, but they would remove um, any any residents so that no one would be living there uh, anymore. And when I looked into the 990 uh, for the Historical Society, they now have a, over $500,000 in investments. So I'm wondering if they took the 120,000 and it grew to now over $500,000. So it's, it's things like this that I'd like to have in a study session so that we have a sense of what their finances are like and where, where in Cupertino do we want to have the historical society in, at, for long term? Do we, do we want to uh, continue the use of Quinlan or, or Stockelmeyer or is there something we want to do with Snyder Hammond and, and kind of flesh all this out and talk about it um, for where we want to move forward? So I, I'm not sure that this is a good long-term solution, just giving them a line item amount and not really thinking about what we want down the road. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. Next, we have Council Member Wei. Yes, um, I think Council Member Moore hit right on the point, the relationship between the Historic Society and Cupertino, actually like um, Vice Mayor Chiara said, is very close. Cupertino Values Histories and Cupertino uh, Historic Society actually is the organization that's being uh, collecting histories and doing trunk shows. And I understand the concern on their line item, how they filled it up, but they did do a lot for other work. So I think once they become a line item, they did not pay attention. They didn't think it was a one-time, you know, trunk show, this and that. So um, so they, they just filled out their, one of their expenses. and. We all receive a letter from, from them, from the Historic Society. They Yes, a study session is in place because they want to give back the uh, Snyderheimer House to the city. It, it's There's no way they can renovate it, it has no access. So um, I think it is a great study session, but I do think we need to give them the line item because if, if like by Ice Meyer Chow, we want to maintain like Saratoga as staff, that's more than $20,000. And they do have a part-time ED, a cost. So to maintain the historic society to go on and then do the study at the same time, I think it's a great uh, venue to do it. I, I would think, I would propose that they do, we give them the 20,000 line item, but have a study session and really work out the, the Steinerheimer house and the histories and 
where historic society and Cupertino City want to really go hand in hand. But this is an organization that run by very passionate volunteers. And I went to many, many of their events and supported many, many of their events. And, you know, their, their computer shows of the original Macintosh, it was amazing. So I think this is a really valuable nonprofit organization. Maybe we should strengthen the of the uh, relationship between our city and this organization. But a 20,000 line item to really help this organization continue to maintain histories of Cupertino, I think it's a small price for the city. But yes, a study session to continue. What do we do with that house? And where, where do we go in the future? That's, that's really a good idea. OK, thank you, Council Member Way. Next, we have Council Member Willie. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, I, I really appreciate Councilman Moore's um, thoughts on the Snyder Hammond House and then also the, the other house. And uh, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself that uh, uh, Councilman Moore had a work plan item that I wasn't spotting because I, I would have supported that. But that's water under the bridge. I do support now a study session so that we on the council really understand how those two um, structures. I did receive a, uh, an email from uh, Jennifer uh, Furlong who gave me some history that I clearly knew not, nothing about. And, uh, but it, I still have many more questions whether or not those are renovatable, uh, what's the historic significance. I think we really should be brought up to speed with a study session and then based on that, determine what it would cost, who should oversee, things of that. I don't believe that's what we're talking about tonight though. The historical society, history is, a, is important. It, it really is. What, what if, Times continue to change at the pace that they are, and we don't have a link to the past. And in five years, 10 years, people don't even know that Apple's roots started here. They just, you know, landed here. No, they started here. Um, you know, Steve Jobs and Monta Vista High School and things like that. Well, our history goes way back before Apple and to the orchards and to the pictures that are at City Hall that, that show, you know, what was here before all this high tech and the preservation of being able to share that with our students, with our community, with the visitors that come, to me is, is vital. And the historical society is our current vehicle for that. Unless there's another vehicle that were to come along I think we have to uh, be good stewards of the historical society. And um, the 20,000, well, if, if we took the oversight of those uh, structures away, would it be 18? I, I don't think that we need to get that granular. Um, the 20,000 to me sounds very reasonable for a year's worth of uh, history oversight and the traveling trunk, you know, going to the schools. To me, whoever thought of that idea, my hat's off to them. You know, getting the, the history out to the community is, is real important. So with that being said, I, I support the request of the $20,000. I support a study session so that we can really understand those, those two structures and what funding is needed for whatever we decide uh, is appropriate uh, for those. So I, I hope we can make those happen. And uh, I'll leave it there, but thank you. Thank you, uh, 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 Councilman Moore, for waking me up, you know, that uh, I just wish it would have been sooner. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Willie, thank you very much for your comments. So um, I'll go, I'll go on this last, um, you know, person to speak on the on our first round of comments. Um, as to the twenty thousand, I I would be fine with keeping it on as a line item. 
Um, I would also be fine with holding it in advance for now uh, until we can uh, get some follow-up action and uh, do a little homework. I think the study session item um, suggestion is interesting, um, but since I, I'm kind of on a momentum roll tonight in assigning homework to a subcommittee, I think it may make sense, a lot of sense in fact, uh, to try to form another one and um, not picking on anyone repeatedly, but I, I would suggest council member Moore and council member way for this one. Um, and, and, and I think there would be three specific topics that they could come back with us uh, after uh, checking with staff. And then we have an agenda item. Um, one has to do with, um, with the monetary allocation, right? A central question is, what is the $20,000 needed uh, for uh, essentially in perpetuity with, with regard to having a line item on, on the budget? Over the course of you know, 10 years, that's, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, and, and then you could you know, do the math going forward. Um, but but it is, it's a significant uh, investment over the course of time. Um, and and uh, the, the second question I would ask about is, would the historical society be uh, accepting of the notion, because Vice Mayor Chow is absolutely correct that the line item identification in 2019 was to try to bring the organization closer to council, right? Um, I think it was, you know, a bit of an olive branch to try to, you know, understand uh, the organization a bit better from, from our perspective um, as a, you know, governing body. Um, but we really didn't have that interface in the ensuing two years. Um, so the second um, conversational item I would I would task the subcommittee with would be to see whether the historical society and their board would be willing to um, perhaps have an ongoing committee assignment from our city council. I, I I recall I think they meet on a monthly basis. So perhaps the the subcommittee or designees on um, if it were to become an ongoing um, committee assignment. Uh, at the beginning of the calendar year would be uh, going perhaps not to every meeting, but maybe meetings on a bi-monthly or quarterly basis, for instance. Um, and then um, I think I covered uh, the three items. It has to do with the monetary allocation, um, having to do with uh, two council members at the uh, meetings on a regular. Oh, uh, the third item has to do with uh, the question that uh, council members have brought up with regard to uh, a particular property uh, and, and another one. So the Snyder Hammond House, as well as Stockelmeyer. I know that in the past, uh, Stockelmeyer has been looked at by multiple nonprofit organizations as perhaps a, a place to uh, park um, their facility. Um, I know Historical Society has been in that mix of conversation in the past. And uh, Louis Stockelmeyer's house, uh, as the first president of Historical Society, uh, one would think, I think correctly um, would have historical significance. And, and having that in the conversation as well as to what the appetite might be for working together. Um, and, and so that would help, I think, form some contours and get council involvement uh, in, in the direction going forward uh, and, and probably alleviate some of the staff burden um, if we were simply to say, come back uh, to us with a study session. Because functionally, I think staff would agglomerate together what we have already been presented with and then members of historical society would come. And then we might end up, if it were just a study session direction, we might end up having, you know, to rehash the, you know, kind of initiation in the middle and the end of a, uh, of a beginning conversation at that point. So, so, so th that would be my thought on it. Um, and then uh, with regard to kind of personal priorities, I did sit on the historical society board for, I believe it was a couple of years before I was elected to city council from 2000. I want to say 2012 to 2014. And, um, you know, I, I think it does have a very admirable mission. Um, the fact of the matter is, in the last couple of decades, the demographics of our city have changed quite substantially. And I think if you look at the composition of the board and you look at the composition of the membership, you're, you're going to see, and I brought this up with, um, you know, my friends on the Historical Society board, you're going to see something of a non-reflection of the overall composition of the community as well. So I wouldn't specifically task this as an item going, you know, to the subcommittee to, to look into and talk about. 
but the, for, for something to think about, I mean, I, I think for the longer term viability of any organization that wants to be actively involved in our community and, and indeed, um, you know, any community in, in, in our country, um, we, we need to think about these uh, in, in a very, um, you know, cohesive, honest, uh, into intellectual fashion um, that, that that doesn't really cast aspersions. It's really a matter of trying to think, you know, on the one hand, there are considerations. Um, you know, I commend you to Stanley Fish's essays on the benefits of homogeneity when he wrote for the New York Times, um, you know, versus, you know, some of the benefits of uh, and, and the travails of trying to find a, a good collaborative um you know, medium and the various types of um, challenges that we face along the way. I think as a community, we've done a great job. And when, when we take a look at a particular organization and we have that, you know, um, opportunity uh, to, to, you know, have that conversation, you know, I think we should avail ourselves of it, not just for uh, the, the sake of the ideals, but for the viability long-term of the organization and the benefit of our community. So um, I would suggest that as a substitute motion, um, I mean, I'm not really getting the full temperature of our, our council as to keeping it on as a line item right now. I don't get the sense that we have unanimity for the $20,000. I would be fine with kind of holding that in advance until the subcommittee could go back um, and then perhaps introducing it as a mid-year adjustment to the budget to reintroduce it as a line item. Uh, because one of those three items I was talking about that the subcommittee could have that conversation with uh, CHS would be the amount, you know, it, it may well end up being that the subcommittee goes, you know, 20,000 on an ongoing basis is a lot of money, but maybe they actually need 45,000. I don't know, uh, but it, it might end up being, you know, less as well, right? So um, I, I would be open to uh, crafting a motion if that would um, get us closer or even at unanimity to uh, make it such that we would, we would hold that back right now until our subcommittee has had a chance to do that work and can come back and give us, you know, recommendations. So I'll, I'll put that out there as an idea. I won't make that a substitute motion right now. I'd like to hear what people have to uh, say uh, about this first round of thoughts here. So I see hands raised from Council Member Moore, followed by Council Member Willie, and then Vice Mayor Chow. Council Member Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor Paul, and I appreciate your suggestions, uh, even though it gives me a little more work. Um, I think it's a good idea. Uh, so we, uh, the city purchased um, Stockelmeyer in 1999 for six million dollars uh, and you're right there's been a lot of interest over the years it comes and goes and it's that it's that one's a challenge uh, I'm a little concerned when I read the um, the letter from the C Cupertino Historical Society and Museum um, what their appetite is for for making renovations for Snyder Hammond House. So I, I want to um, hear from them what the, what's possible, what, what's the risk, what's the reward out of that. Uh, I don't like this as a line item um, with the, um, the uncertainty that we have. Uh, so I, I like your suggestion to, to bring it back after we've uh, looked into this the situation and what um, the interest is between the two houses and how we fit in with uh, the Cupertino Historical Society and what we can do long term so that they um, have a really viable organization here. Um, when I originally made the suggestion, and I appreciate what um, Councilman Willie uh, said, when I when I tried to add the uh, Sockelmeyer House onto the work plan. Um, at that time, my suggestion, and it, it was just like, you know, put something forth, you know, you're suggesting that they uh, improve this house. What What is your wish for it? And my thought, uh, you know, coming from New England with many historical homes and and just kind of a, an ethos of you don't tear down these old homes, you, you save them and protect them and you reuse them. And, you know, I'll tell you a little story. My, my grandparents were, they worked in a woolen mill. Um, that woolen mill, big brick building is still standing and now it's got offices and, and different, uh, different um, companies are in there now. And then another woolen mill across the river is uh, housing. Um, so they didn't tear down those old buildings, they just repurposed them. And that's kind of where my mind is at. So my thought with the Stockelmeyer house was that 
I thought it would be interesting, like they have at the Smithsonian Institution, that the original kitchen could be restored um, a night, so that we would see what a 1903 um, kitchen would be like, and that if it was possible that some of the historical society items could be in there, that that might be interesting for, for uh, visitors. And then it has uh, a rare um, orange orchard in the back. It has you know, a few acres. And that the, uh, the history of uh, the environmental uh, pollution that we have here that started with, uh, you know, using lead arsenate uh, on the um, orchards to uh, moving to DDT. And then you had Silent Spring and this, this kind of awakening towards how we need to take care of the environment. Yet we're in Silicon Valley and you end up with the pollution from the tech industry. So I was thinking from an ecological standpoint, there was a... Uh, certainly an opportunity to educate uh, visitors there just just based on having that that orchard in the back so that was those were kind of my thoughts about it um, so I've strayed kind of far there but uh, I, I do prefer that we come back and not make this an ongoing line item at this time until we know more about what we're getting into thank you council member Moore I believe the next hand was raised from council member Willie and then council member way and then vice mayor Chow Council Member Willie, you, oh, no, actually, Vice Mayor Chow and then Council Member Way is the order of hands that I see. So, um, Council Member Willie, you have the floor. Yeah, so great comments across the board. Uh, and I feel that I'm pretty frugal. Uh, in fact, the, the numbers that we talk about up here for, for grants and things are really quite small. But I also think that we need to show support for the groups and in this line item, the uh, historical society. And so I, I really am concerned that if we, if we postpone, you know, allocating them the money, whether it's a direct line item or for tonight, we say we're going to go ahead and provide the 2020, 2020, or 2020 the 2021-22 uh, fiscal uh, grant for them, I, I do think we need to do that. They have their ongoing uh, financial bills, again, for the traveling trunk, the shows. And so if we were to say, well, gee whiz, we're not ready to uh, allocate the funds for you for your ongoing uh, work, I, I really struggle with that. We don't want them to feel that uh, uh, we're, you know, tying their hands over, you know, ongoing um, uh, financial uh, needs. So, so with that being said, my first choice would be that we allocate the $20,000 for the Historical Society for the uh, fiscal year and that we continue to do this study session and determine what is the appropriate funding and whether it should be a regular line item. I think there should be, but you know, let's talk about it. Is it 20 or is, as one number was tossed out, is it more? And what about the concept of a subcommittee council member, Willie, are you? Right, Ab absolutely. Okay. My second choice, my second choice, again, focusing on their, their uh, current financial need, my second choice and a distant second would be we say, okay, we'll go ahead and allocate the first half and in, in the next six months, we'll do the subcommittee and then we'll come back and allocate the second half. You know, that would be my second choice, but I would, I would really like us not to leave tonight without having, providing the funding that they need for their, for their work you know, to, to maintain the history of this community and make it available. So I'm, I'm not ready to put it out as a motion. My motion would be that we allocate the 20 uh, tonight with the ongoing work uh, of the subcommittee. But, um, you know, let's see how the rest of the council. Uh, but great, great comments from this council. Our hearts, all five of our hearts are in the right spot. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Council Member Willie. We next have Vice Mayor Chow, followed by Council Member Willie. Thank I hope that we separate the issue of the Snyder Hammond House from the funding 
for historical society, because um, there are various things that resulted in them taking over the house. And it might be a good decision, it might not be a good decision, but then that's separate issue from whether Cupertino should fund historical society. So I am, I think for me, the committee to study both options are good, but maybe the two should be two separate uh, subcommittees. First then, as Snyder Hammond House, I, I think the way you received the letter from Historic Society that it, it's old, that's the only value. It doesn't really have architectural or other historical significance. Then, but then it will be very costly. Even if it's a great idea, there is orchard in the back, but who is going to fundraise, restore all that and maintain that going forward? Apparently, the historic society doesn't have that capability. Would the city Cupertino take that on? And then also, a lot of times, history can be kept without that structure. For example, we could have a, a, a plaque there that tell all the stories of the history of the house and the people who have lived there. Then and I think the right now the trail has is going by the house, then whoever walks through the trail will be able to read all that stories. Even the, the, though the house might not be there in the future, that history is kept. And maybe there could be a, a symbolic uh, um, structure, people can rest there, and then, then that structure, but then that also needs to be funded. So another idea someone mentioned is uh, that location is really, really remote actually from Cupertino, but it's right next to Mid Pen open space. Maybe the city can work with Mid Pen, that Mid Pen can just take over uh, as part of their open space plan, and then um, with the city can help fund a um, historical um, story board uh, in that site. That, but I think that's a separate um, discussion. And then for the line item, I like Council Member Willie's idea. Let's fund them now with the understanding that we will come come back next year uh, with an agreement that will resolve the issue of transparency, accountability, and better partnership with the city. Um, I think we all know that during the pandemic, many nonprofits are not able to go out and do fundraisers. So, um, especially at this time, they really need our support. And so, and they are still doing a lot of good jobs. I know that Jennifer has, has some good ideas in mind. So I would, yeah, I would support that's just fund the line item, but with the understanding by next year, we have to work out some agreement. There has to be a signed agreement, partnership between the society and the city and then we can decide how much is a reasonable amount. And I'm, so I'm envisioning two separate communities on the two different issues, yeah. Right, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow, Council Member Wei. Sorry, thank you, Mayor. Actually, I don't have to say much. I agree with um, Mayor Chow, uh, Vice Mayor Chow, and also uh, Council Member Willy. I think um, the historical society needs the funding this year. If it weren't a line item two years ago, they might have, they will come up with a application that's going to get $20,000. I just think that um, it is really a small price for Cupertino City to support a very good organization that supports the uh, history of Cupertino. And I do agree with Mayor uh, Paul, that you know, historic society can use diversity, and um, you know, so I I'm very willing to work with them in the subcommittee. So um, I don't have to say much. I I think a lot being said. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll finish up the second round of comments. Uh, after hearing everything, I'm going to go ahead and put in a substitute motion, and the content of that substitute motion will uh, encompass the subcommittee suggestion along with the study session to come back upon the conclusion of the subcommittee's work. Uh, Vice Mayor Chow, I hear what you are saying with regard to breaking it out into two subcommittees. I wanna keep it simple and streamlined um, at this point in any event, um, and, and to keep it topical to the items I was, 
uh, identifying. I think it's up to the subcommittee as to whether you end up having um, another um, another session. One of the issues I see as well is that if you end up having two subcommittee members and per perhaps another subcommittee that possibly has another member in common, you might run into some issues with regard to serializing it. Uh, so, so this is my motion. Um, I would like the subcommittee, um, and, and you know, I did ask for uh, council members uh, Moore and Way, and they both seem willing uh, to be comprised of council members Moore and Way to uh, look into a conversation and have that conversation with Cupertino Historical Society with regard to the necessity of an ongoing allocation of $20,000 in a line item. Uh, second, um, the possibility of um, having a committee assignment on an ongoing and forward-going basis uh, of two council members from Cupertino sitting in on uh, at least um, periodic board meetings on a, a set period of time that will be determined um, as a recommendation by the subcommittee and to have a uh, at least an initial conversation as to thoughts on the two properties, uh, one owned by the city, one owned by the historical society uh, located respectively um, and, and well described respectively colloquial, colloquially as the uh, Stockmeyer House and the Snyder Hammond House. Um, so, so that's my first motion, and that's the substitute motion for the default motion. Um, and, and where I'm going with this is that I'd like to break that out from the from the money uh, item. So, I, I'd like to see if there's a second for that motion um, before uh, putting it forward for further discussion. But where I'm going with this is, once we vote on this motion, uh, if it passes, I would put forward another motion with regard to uh, the monetary allocation for this upcoming. Uh, fiscal budget. Uh, Councilmember Moore, you have your hand raised. Would you like to second uh, this motion? I know you had it raised before. Um, uh, I did have it raised before, but I'll second it. Okay, uh, so we'll uh, segue into you for um, a commentary on our third round of comments on the side. Okay, uh, this is to address um, what the, the funding is for. Uh, and from the application, uh, $10,000 for other professional services, design, production, and installation of signs along Stevens Creek Trail, and $10,000 for other collection storage, maintenance of Snyder Hammond property, wildlife prevention, liability insurance, pest control, et cetera. Uh, so just to clarify that. Oh, and with regards to the orchard, the orchard is, um, it's an orange orchard. It's unique because I, I think it's one of one of the only or one of the few orange orchards in the area. And that one is behind Stockelmeyer House. And um, I, I know a couple of years ago, they were giving the, donating the excess um, oranges, uh, I believe to West Valley Community Services, but they collect, collect them and donate them. Um, and they've been doing some maintenance and upkeep of the trees to, in that orchard there. So it is being um, taken care of as far as I know. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. Uh, at this point, I don't see further hands raised, and so I will ask our city clerk to conduct a roll call vote on the substitute motion that is currently on the table. Madam City Clerk, would you conduct that roll call vote, please? Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Way? Aye. Councilmember Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, at this point, I will go back to, so Council Member Willie, you had indicated as a, I, I, I realize that this is a long shot second uh, preference, um, being willing to allocate at this time a $10,000 line item in the upcoming budget. I'm gonna go ahead and move that under the idea that, that um, well, let me move that first and then speak to it. So I would like to move that we allocate a $10,000 line item on the budget uh, at this time and revisit uh, after our subcommittee has had a chance to interface and bring this back to us in a study session as to whether to adjust that line item um, in, in a mid-year uh, budget adjustment. Uh, may I have a second for that motion? Uh, again, Council Member Moore, your hand is no longer raised. Uh, would anyone like to second that motion? I'll it, second it. And I'd, I'd like to put forth a um, a friendly amendment for an additional ten thousand, and then if we don't get the support for the full twenty ten plus ten, 
then we're still left with the 10,000 and can go ahead and move forward with the vote. Um, well, thank you for seconding council member Willie. At this point, let me, um, let me set aside the friendly amendment request until we've heard a round of discussion. Let me okay. put forward my rationale. I, I hear what you're saying on the 10,000. I understand that it's the second, you know, preference for you, but I think, you know, putting some on the table right now also motivates a discussion, um, you, you know, not, not to play carrot and stick, but I mean, I, I think it neatly fits within the first half of the fiscal year as well. And if we're expecting to, you know, bring this back to council before the end of the calendar year, then um, we very, my expectation would be that, um, you know, if, if there was a justification for it in the past, there should be a justification for it um, right now and possibly going forward. So, so that's my thinking on it. Council member Moore, you have your hand raised. Um, and again, to remind everyone, the motion on the table is 10,000 on the line item right now with a revisitation at the time when we have our study session following the uh, subcommittee's work here. Council member Moore, you have the floor. Okay, so my concern, it really, it goes, goes back to 2012. Uh, um, there were conditions uh, of, appro of approval, <clears throat> uh, conditions 43 and 44. Uh, they needed to have an inventory of all RPA related off-road construction equipment expected to be used. Uh, they wanted the horsepower rating, engine production year, projected hours of use. That was 43, 44 uh, that they would Options, they had to reduce emissions and that would include using newer model engines, use of retrofit emission control devices, use of low emissions diesel products or alternative fuels, use of alternative materials handling options, e.g. conveyor systems or other options as may become commercially available and verifiable. Those were two mitigation uh, requests. And then you had item 45 in lieu of 43 and 44, those mitigation measures um, they would provide uh, evidence establishing to the planning manager satisfaction that they that there are legally binding restrictions precluding any occupancy of the caretaker's residence um, located at 2961 Stevens Creek Boulevard. So, uh, and then the historical society made this deal, which in in my mind looks like they made a deal allowing pollution. That's how it reads, and and in exchange the Historical Society received $120,000 and agreed to no, no longer have anyone renting that house. So it starts with that and my concern with that action and that the, the what I now I'm looking at the 990 for um, their 2018 990 and they have 500 over $500,000 um, in investments now. So my what I think occurred and, and so this is the sort of thing I'll learn more about. Um, was that the 120,000 perhaps was invested and now they have a, a good bit of money. So when I see that, I'm a little concerned about, and, and that you had the connection of having Lehigh employees on the Historical Society board at the time when this agreement was made. Um, so my concern is that um, whether or not they truly are in needs of the funds. I heard some concern about um, us providing maintenance in which, uh, to Snyder Hammond House, which their application indicates that we would be doing, um, and whether or not also if they had continued to have someone living in the house that, that Lehigh would have had to be uh, kind of reined in on the, the air pollution that was, was happening there. So, and, and we've, we've had a long um, history with Lehigh and, and pollution in the area. Um, so I, I am reluctant to increase the amount. I'm reluctant to see it as a line item. And I think it, this, that the, the subcommittee um, would probably be best to, to dig into these items and, and bring them back to council and you know air, air this whole um, situation out. Hey, thank you, Councilmember Moore. Uh, let me ask you two questions. Um, would you vote for the motion on the table, uh, first off? And it's sounding like a no, but I don't wanna you know, kind of you know, divine your, your current, you know, your previous visit. Yeah. Mayor, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry to ask you to repeat it, but after, after oh, going through oh, all so the 10, numbers, 10, I can't remember what you said. It's 10,000 as a line item right now, and then we uh, would reap a, a, a potential adjustment after the subcommittee has done its work and come back with a, a study session together with staff. Uh, 
I, I'm concerned, I, you know, honestly, I could go with the 20,000 as it at not being a line item, go with the 20,000 and, and not have it as a line item, just do it as a one, one time thing and then we come back. And then to come back with the topic of whether a line item is justified going forward. I see, I see. Um, okay, so you, uh, I guess my, my other question was, would you be more likely to support the motion on the table than a $20,000 line item? Um, but, but your comment here is, has given me pause here. That, that's interesting. So let me go ahead. Well, I, I do, uh, Mayor Paul, I do have a, a little a bit of um, something else to add, in, you know, is that they, they are receiving um, free rent at Quinlan. Is that true? And would anyone have some sort of guess what, what that monetary value um, would be? And then, you know, when we're talking about Stockelmeyer, um, the suggestion that, that I have is, is that we would be having some renovations there for the historical society to actually be potentially providing them more space um, in, in the city. Well, that's perspective, of course. Well, so let me, let me do this. Um, let, let me let me amend my motion. Um, I'm I'm going to amend the, the substitute motion to um, to move an allocation of twenty thousand dollars to the historical society for the upcoming fiscal year, uh, not a line item, and then to visit the issue of whether to have an ongoing line item after the subcommittee has performed its work. Would you be willing to um, accept that as the seconder of my motion, Councilmember Moore? Yes. Or, I'm sorry, was, I, it, was it you or was it Council Member Willie who seconded? Uh, I think Council Member Willie had seconded the first one. Was it me? Uh, it, Council I, Member Willie seconded Mayor uh, Mayor Paul your motion. The second motion. Okay, so let me go back to Council Member Willie. Would you be willing to um, amend the? Uh, and you're nodding, so I'm going to take that. You're, at, at yes. He's, you're on mute, John. Council Member. I think he was just nodding. Um, Absolutely. Sorry about that. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Council Member Willie. Um, okay, so there's a new motion on the table, um, and uh, we have a hand raised from Council Member Way at this point. Uh, Council Member Way, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Prout. I actually like the new motion very much, and I would love to work with Council Member Moore to get to know the Historic Society better and get to know what they've done and clear out some of the, you know, whether these facts or not. and. Really, I think we can really work together and get the uh, build a little bit more, actually, better relationship between the city and the historic society. So I am all for give them the twenty thousand dollars this year so that they have the budget to work on. But um, Councilmember Moore and I will work with the historic society, explore different options, and and we can go from there. And I am pretty sure our city would value the historic society's contributions and um, go forward from there. Okay, very good. Thank you, Council Member Wei. Vice Mayor Chow, you have the floor. Um, yeah, I support the motion, um, but I'm still a little concerned that we are mixing up the funding for historical society with the what to do with two historical houses in, in, in Cupertino, which may or may not be even Cupertino Historical Society's responsibility. And then there is all this history of what should have been done, who's the responsible. That's really meddling the water of trying to form a cordial um, partnership with Cupertino Society. So I know that we voted on that motion already, but I really am concerned we are, if we mix these two issues in the same subcommittee, we might not have, um, there might be unexpected uh, conflict. Yeah. Understood. Well, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. And, and I will say that um, once the subcommittee comes back and reports out, um, if we do have an appetite from CHS as well as from the city council to um, have a couple of members sit on as an ongoing committee assignment. Um, th there's no set, um, you know, carryover for our subcommittee members to be on that uh, committee assignment. And, and so I, I would say that, um, you know, as, as with other committee assignments, and I think the timing is very good. We're six months out from 
the the mayoral term change. Uh, that is a um, that is prerogative of the the mayor to um, you, you know to uh, suggest to council for approval at a meeting sometime. I believe in late December or early January. So um, at, at that point, certainly the you know the issues could be bifurcated as well. I, I just think that this is probably the more efficient way to do it, as well as the safer way because you're not necessarily you know serializing this to a majority of our council um, at, at this time. Um, but you know, I, as with you know many, uh, if not most of your your your, your points, I, I really appreciate the um, the well considered nature of it. Um, so um, yeah, that, that, that's uh, appreciated as well with regard to the, the support on the motion. I don't see any other hands at this point. And so what I'll do is ask our city clerk to conduct a roll call vote on this motion that's on the table. Madam city clerk, would you please conduct the roll call vote? Council member Moore? Aye. Council member Way? Aye. Council member Willie? Aye. Vice mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, very good. We're at 846. We're about two and a half hours into uh, tonight's meeting. Um, and so we've cleared the, um, yeah, I think, congratulations. I think we did uh, a really good job. And I, I like how the format is fostering such uh, very complete and um, good discussions at this point. Um, let's go ahead and take a five minute break. I see 846. We'll reconvene at 853. Um, or 8.52 or thereabouts, um, and we'll start in with the uh, budget study session item here. Uh, we'll quick see question, if, uh, Quick, quick yeah, question. Uh, uh, council uh, member. Can you, can you give us a, a, your estimate? You know, being a Friday night, we're going to start a budget uh, session, uh, right. and we're heading into 9 o'clock on a Friday night. How long do you think the budget session would go? Uh, let's, we, okay, let's, let, let's pull the interest of council. I mean, I would I would be happy to throw a timeout, time certain of eleven o'clock. I mean, I, I know we've made the commitment to uh, the public uh, to you know get people out by um, by, by midnight on our meetings. Um, so, what's the pleasure of the council before we break? Um, I'll go by hands as well. Um, council member, will your hand? Uh, council member Moore, the, would, would 11 o'clock as a, you know, timing aim work for you? I forwarded the uh, the budget subcommittee information to you and my comments also, my separate comments on the budget, which were not just budget format comments, um, but budget comments altogether. Um, I could... Personally, I, I could be done my part in 30 minutes tops uh, if I could get people to agree with me, of course. But um, yeah, I, I could see 11. That's good. Okay, uh, we'll reconvene and we'll pick it up. I, I will attempt to, um, you know, get us uh, get us adjourned by 11 o'clock. Um, another five minutes. Uh, let's call it uh, 8:54. We'll see you then. Thanks.